You asked for it. Today I'll be showing you every software defined radio and amateur radio piece of equipment in the KR0 SIV mobile vehicle. Don't go anywhere, you're watching Signals Everywhere. If you're interested in software defined radio and radio communications in general, please be sure to smack that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future content. Jumping in, we'll start with our antenna system. The first one here is a 220 antenna for the 1.25 amateur band. We then have a Browning antenna that I use as a dual band 2 meter 440 antenna. Next up is the little puck antenna that you see in the middle of the vehicle. This is a modified GPS antenna with the filter removed for Immersat and Iridium reception. We then have the 2 meter antennas on either side of the vehicle. These are used on the right for my scanner and SDR feeds and the one on the left dedicated to APRS. In the center we have a 900 megahertz amateur radio antenna and then right behind that is my GPS antenna which feeds my Windows tablet used for APRS operation among other things. Jumping straight into the mobile let's address the number one question I get about this car that is the Windows tablet attached directly to the dash of my vehicle. Here you can see it's running a copy of APRS IS32. This is used to set up an amateur radio APRS station and it happens to be extremely fully featured. I love using this application and a Windows computer is really the only way to do it. Among many other applications, I tend to run ProScan. This is a very nice piece of software that allows me to remotely connect to a Bearcat BCD scanner in my trunk. A scanner that I happen to purchase for under $40 with a broken screen, meaning that this remote capability became extremely useful, so I didn't need to have the scanner directly in the front of my vehicle. Another reason I use a Windows tablet in the car is for something like this Contour Shuttle Controller. I can pair this with a plugin and a piece of software called SDR Sharp, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. This allows me to easily, with just one hand, switch between all of the available demodulators, the available bandwidth, as well as move up and down the frequency bands and even control the zooming aspects of the SDR Sharp software, essentially giving me full control of SDR Sharp using nothing more than the Contour Controller, which typically is used for video editing software. In my case, this allows me to easily move up into the Interset band at 1.545 GHz and without much effort tune up to one of the Inmarsat Aero channels where I can decode aircraft and other data, something that would be incredibly difficult and cumbersome if I had nothing more than just the touchscreen interface provided by this tablet. The tablet itself is powered via 5 volts using a 12 to 5 volt adapter that I purchased on Amazon. In addition to that, that 5 volt source also runs back to the trunk of the vehicle and is used to power my mobile linked Bluetooth APRS adapter. This makes a connection to my 2 meter amateur radio in the back trunk of the vehicle and runs up to the tablet via Bluetooth to control the APRS um, packet data being sent back and forth between the Windows tablet and the radio itself. In addition, that 5 volt source also runs across to the other side of my trunk where I power an admittedly messy at the moment USB hub that powers some USB devices among some other equipment in the vehicle. Continuing with the SDR software in the vehicle itself, we have the Android tablet in the center console. Among many applications, I run things such as RF Analyzer, which is an Android app that is very similar and reminiscent to something like SDR Sharp within Windows. I also use this for things such as the scanner radio application that allows me to pipe in some audio from third party radio sources found online. In addition to that, I can also track aircraft in real time, again, using an Android app on the tablet. And of course, there are some other benefits to having such an in dash tablet, such as running an application like Torque, which allows me to get real time updates on information on my engine system, as well as pulling up and clearing fault codes within the vehicle. I also use this head unit to pipe in audio from the Windows tablet so I can do things like listen to the scanner audio as well as listen to audio from a P25 decoder that runs as an application SDR trunk on the Windows tablet itself. Now that we've looked at some of the software defined stuff, let's look at the regular amateur radio stuff. Here you can see my 2 meter Motorola Astro Spectra. This is a 50 watt radio for a 2 meter amateur operation, or at least amateur operation in my case. Uh, this is going to do all of my 2 meter repeaters in both analog as well as digital P25. 
You can see as I flip through here, I have the ability to flip between different zones and uh, channel banks, as well as enable and disable the scan functionality of the radio. I do have to program this particular radio in DOS, however, it does work quite well, and I have to say I am quite happy with it. Keeping with the theme of Motorola P25 radios, here I have my Model 3 XTS 5000. This is a 5 watt portable radio for the 70 centimeter band, or at least 70 centimeters in my case, with an antenna connection made to mate up with the one inside of this XTVA Converticom. This allows me to simply take the radio, insert it into the adapter, and then pull up all of the same channels that I have in my portable right here from this handy um, W3 mic uh, controller that I have in my vehicle. So anything that I have in my portable, I now have in my mobile. Uh, the only downside to this is that, of course, if I don't remember to bring my portable with me, I no longer have 70 centimeter capability within the mobile. I'm sure you're beginning to see a pattern here. We have my Motorola CDM1550LS. This is a uh, commercial 220 band radio that has been modified for the amateur 220 radio band. So I can tune in all of my 220 amateur repeaters in the area and of course flip through to things like the local simplex frequency as well as some of the repeaters over in Canada because I live in northeastern Ohio. Occasionally band conditions are correct and I am able to make contact across Lake Erie into Canada. More recently, I've become interested in the 33cm amateur radio band. This happens to be 902 to 928 MHz. To accomplish this, I'm using a modified Motorola XPR4580 uh, mobile radio. This particular one is capable of digital operation. Assuming I purchase an entitlement, this will do DMR. Currently, this is only programmed for out-of-band um, operation in the amateur radio band under analog operation. However, I am working on putting up a local 900 MHz repeater, and with the use of an MMDVM board, we can accomplish digital DMR operations, so that entitlement may certainly be in the future of this particular radio. In preparation for a cross-banding switch, I have uh, installed one of these uh, impressed dock chargers that I can use to charge any of my HT Pro Series radios, so I can switch back and forth between 2 meters to 440, 440 to 900, etc. Here I have the MTX9250. This happens to be a 900 MHz radio modified for amateur operation. Here we have an HT1250. This one is for 70 centimeter operation. Uh, this one did not need any modification in this case. Here we have an HT1250 LS Plus. This one has modified filters and modified software for the 220 amateur radio band, originally a commercial radio. And then finally, another modified HT1250 radio, modified from low band into the 6 meter amateur radio bands. All of these can be charged directly in this impress dock charger, and eventually I'll be able to cross band any of the mobile rigs within my vehicle to one of these portables, making this charger an invaluable resource. So as you can see at this point, I've packed in just about every amateur radio band that I currently have uh, available radios for into this vehicle, and I have a whole lot more planned in store. Currently, this is kind of my play car um, as I drive um, back and forth to work, so I may be playing around with it in the future, doing things such as a dedicated direction-finding array and learning uh, through this experimentation for when I get a larger vehicle um, and I can better place antennas and uh, kind of get a better idea of how these systems should be run. But I have to say that so far, everything has worked um, far above and beyond what I would have originally expected. Um, there's no real interference between systems, which is really amazing when you think about how much crap I have crammed into this vehicle. With all of this being said, I want to thank all of my subscribers and patrons for making this video possible. We have a lot more in store, and of course, a new video every single Tuesday. So I can't wait to see you next week, and I'm going to leave you guys with a video of me trying to make some radio contacts in uh, what I thought was a good place, but turned out to be an RF hole. So I thank you all, and I'll see you in the next one. So we got a couple options here. Um, so we have the... XTVA for the P25 radio that's not currently in the car with me. Just didn't think about it. Then we have the 900 machine, which I know for a fact there's no 900 around here, but KR0SIV 9275. Anyone listening?
and of course there's not because it's 900 there's no repeater around here but it is something I want to start playing with so this is my uh, <clears throat> MTX 9250 and I can put any HT Pro Series radio in this little charger here so I have one for 220 I have one for UHF uh, the only one I don't really have yet is VHF but I can easily use this for two-way communication if I need to hand a radio off to somebody else then I have either a 220 I can pop in here, a 440, or a 900. KR0 SIV for a radio check, 9275. There you go. <clears throat> we also have the 220 CDM. Right now this is on 223.5, there's not going to be anybody there, but we might get somebody on KB8 FKM, our local 220 repeater. KR0 SIV mobile. And it looks like I'm not actually hitting it. KR0 SIV mobile. KR0 SIV mobile. Where I'm sitting in this little dip, not hitting any repeaters, unfortunately. KR0 SIV mobile simplex 223.52. Nobody simplex, didn't think. <clears throat> didn't think we would be so lucky. And finally, of course, we have the two meter radio on the Motorola um, Astro Saber. Not Saber. What is this? I don't know. Then there's the two meter radio on the Motorola Astro 25 Spectra. This is a P25 and analog radio. KR0 SIV mobile. Not hitting anything there either. Go figure, I can't hit anything in this hole where I am recording. That's nice, that makes for a great test video. Well, there you go.